You are listening to a shortened squeeze here with Anthony Pasquazi. I decided to flip the microphone on in the wake of a very disappointing thing that happened just a couple nights ago on the floor in Toronto in Game 5 of these NBA Finals. For those of you who know, I am of course alluding to Kevin Durant and his possible torn Achilles tendon. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to whiteboard it just a bit for you. It's hard to believe that you wouldn't know, but here we go anyways. Earlier in the playoffs, Kevin Durant was sidelined with a lower calf strain. He missed about 30 days and many games. The Warriors, being the great team that they are, made it to the NBA Finals in spite of the fact that Kevin Durant was not able to play. And then they got down 3-1 to the Toronto Raptors. Now, Kevin Durant was cleared by team doctors. He was told that he could not injure his calf more, but he clearly was not 100%. He plays in game five of the NBA Finals, plays the whole first quarter, nearly every minute of play, and then something happens on a non-contact play as he's backing up. He reaches down for his heel, calf area, and it's pretty clear to everybody that it is an Achilles tendon tear, strain, something not good for fans of Kevin Durant, for fans of the NBA, for fans of, of course, Golden State Warriors. So what got me thinking and what wanted, what made me want to turn a microphone on to talk about is relating this to my own circumstances and to my own experiences after hearing this i think you'll understand why i now have a very strong opinion when an athlete says he's not ready even if he's cleared i'm never going to fault that athlete again because of what i'm about to say now kevin durant like i said cleared by team doctors told that he couldn't injure himself Further, and who is to say that this Achilles injury has anything to do with the calf injury at all? It, it could be totally unrelated, and there is room for that. This could have happened just as easily as it couldn't have happened. The jury is still out on that at this point of recording. But it is undeniable that Kevin Durant knew that he was not 100%. There was a lot of inner turmoil going on with Kevin Durant and a lot of outer turmoil as well. We all know Kevin Durant is a very sensitive athlete. He's a millennial athlete. He pays attention on social media. He understands the criticism of his entire career. He gets it. He's plugged in. Not unlike a lot of millennial athletes today. He saw that he was being called soft for not playing, that he was giving up on his teammates for not playing, comparing him to his teammate Looney, who was deemed not able to play with a collarbone injury all finals long and was out there toughing it out. He saw that, and I'm sure that pushed him to play when he was not 100%. Now, ultimately, it was his decision to play, and I don't think we can fault him for that because who knew that he was going to tear his Achilles? I'm sure he didn't. The team doctors didn't. There isn't really anybody at fault. But what I'm thinking about my personal experience is taking me way back, opening up the yearbook, to my final year of high school track. Now, I was in the finals at state for long jump. I was the sixth seed heading into finals. I had a really awesome chance to possibly win state. I mean, who doesn't want to win state? That's something that you think about your entire high school career, your entire entire grade school career. And I was in that position to possibly do that. Now, in Illinois, the long jump competition at state is separated between two days. You qualify for the finals on Saturday. Friday is when the preliminary jumps take place. I qualified for finals. Like I said, I was in sixth place, very close. During warm-ups of the finals, I definitely felt something in my hamstring. Now, it wasn't a pull. It might have been a little cramp or a twinge or something that I, I, I couldn't grasp. I didn't know exactly what it was. And yes, if this was a tiny triangular meet in, in April or March, I totally would have gone to my coach and said, hey, I, you know... 
it's the finals. I This doesn't really matter. I don't need to jump. Let's not push it. I had been dealing with a pretty injury-filled senior season anyway, so I would not have jumped. But the circumstance, finals of Illinois State, my parents, family, friends drove two hours to watch me jump three times in finals. All my teammates were there. And this was it. This is what I had been working my whole life up until that point to do. I couldn't just say, no, I'm not going to jump. I couldn't do that. I could have. And now looking back, I probably should have. And why do I say that? Well, I had what was never diagnosed, but what I'm pretty sure is a grade three strain of my hamstring. It's two years later, and I'm still dealing with the tidal wave effect of that pulled hamstring. I may never be the same jumper again. And it's terrible to do this, but looking back, it was my fault. Because I didn't man up and I didn't say, hey, maybe I shouldn't jump. <laughs> because on that first jump, my entire track career changed forever. So I am not Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's situation is way more important than mine. There are millions of dollars and millions of fans and a whole league hinging on his decision on whether to play or not. For me, it was just state track <laughs> in high school. But the, the, the situations are similar. Not on a scale, <laughs> on scale, but they're similar in that my body and my brain said, hey, you probably shouldn't do this, Anthony. You probably shouldn't jump. But then everything else, all the exterior elements were pointing in the direction of, no, dude, what are you going to do? Are you going to quit now? Really? You've been working all this time. All these people are here. They're all wa waiting to watch you jump. And you're just going to quit on them? And that's what Kevin Durant was going through. He knew his body wasn't ready. And he didn't listen. He listened to all the exterior things. So from here on out, this is all I want to take from this entire situation and from this entire little tiny squeeze podcast is from here on out, I promise to never, no matter the, cir no matter the circumstance, question an athlete when he says that he or she are not ready, is not ready. I don't care if team doctors have cleared them I don't care if it's obvious they're healthy. If they don't think they're ready, I'm going to side with the athlete from here on out. This has been a tiny little squeeze with Anthony Pasquazi. Be sure to follow the squeeze at the squeeze four on Twitter. Follow myself at Anthony underscore pass on Twitter. Subscribe on the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Be sure to like this video and I'm excited to talk to you again. I think this is more of the medium that we're going to go with. These tiny little squeezes, they're a little easier to put together. I don't always have opinions on everything, so I don't really see the point in making a hour-long podcast every single week. I think this is the direction that we're going to go over the summer. So look out for more of these coming up on the YouTube channel and on the Twitter account. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you when I talk to you.